Welcome back to episode 20 of the Real Life Podcast. Uh, consistent podcaster, I hardly know her. Uh, um, after been a, a big break oh since October, which was the last one of these, um, but I thought it appropriate to do another festive special. Things are a little different today because I've got a professional in. Uh, for Christmas this year, I wanted to find someone who knows their stuff, who really you know, can give me insight on the intricacies of performance. So I, I fired off various emails, contacted every person that I could conceivably reach and made a million phone calls. And I finally found a brilliant professional actress to come on and do this podcast with me but then she cancelled so here is my sister <laughs> i knew that's where that was going <laughs> um all jokes aside you are actually an actor i am actually a professional actor you are that's what you do for a job it is and a very good one i will say well it's been uh, i'll not disagree because great it's success. probably not very good for my agent to hear me disagree with you but yeah we, do we need to run this by our agent no no okay you're not paying me absolutely bloody not um <laughs> So, we're just basically going to have a discussion, given mm. that you are a performer, yes. about our favourite performances in film. Yes. It's not going to be like a ranking system in terms of your favourites, because I think okay. this more than ever is a bit stupid for that. And oh. also it's better just to have a sort of more general just discussion the favorites. about this. Yeah, I mean... Are we only two ones we hate? We will get on to that. Brilliant. Um, Can't wait. So, my leading question uh -huh. is just this. Yeah. Who is the best actor of all time? Well, what a light question to begin with. <laughs> I know you haven't prepared anything. Um, so. uh, <laughs> yeah, I haven't prepared anything. I'm so sorry. I just turned up. I there are a number. It depends what you want them for. Okay. There are a number of excellent actors that I think are unbelievable. Mm -hmm. David Tennant is very close to the top of my list. Mm -hmm. Because I think that anything he does, I believe. I don't necessarily need somebody to be like a completely different person every time they do yeah, a performance, but I need to like believe everything that they're saying. Mm -hmm. And like, he he does a banking advert and I'm like, maybe I should join that bank, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I just think he, everything he does is very believable. Yeah. So I think David Tennant's quite close to the top of that list. Um, Can I just say on that point? Yeah. My I think the best actor ever is David Tennant. Oh well, um, that's probably because we had the same upbringing. It anyway, probably <laughs> is that, but, uh, yeah, it's I've, I've I've I can't think of anything he's ever been bad in. That was the main thing about yeah. it. Yeah, um, I've seen him try his hand at most things. Uh -huh. and it's always pretty bang on the money. Yeah, um, and also the way that I right now and the way that I understand dialogue comes a lot of from a lot of the things that I've seen him in and the way he says things right. because he says things right. That's kind of there was a long time when I was a kid when I would read any book and it would be read in my head in the voice of David Tennant. Oh, that's a bit obsessive. But well, but he did audio books for oh, something. Oh, we did. But he, he might have done just might have just up in Doctor I Who. I think audio it was Doctor Who audio books. Yeah, I you know they're on Audible. I listen to those. Are they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I'm sad and lonely. Anyway, Plug. um, the yeah, no, I think he's I think he's top tier. I think the same thing about Olivia Coleman, mm -hmm. but I don't think that. I don't think that she tries as hard. No. <laughs> I think she just turns up and does it and happens to be quite good. Yeah. Um, and I'm very jealous of that. Mm. Um, but yeah, I also believe it's sort of 99.9 .9 of the things that, that, that she does. Um, in terms of, I don't know, like new talent mm -hmm. uh, in, in, a, in an inverted well, comment. This was a question later on, so please tell me. Um, Florence Pugh. Of course. The, Unreal. Great, the great Florence Pugh. Unreal. Yeah. Um, I think... Like, have you seen Don't Worry Darling? Uh, twice, unfortunately. Oh, yeah. I just thought it was like, it was like watching someone's like BA acting class in Harry Styles versus a <laughs> master class in Florence Pugh. And they just happened to talk to each other. Yeah. And uh, yeah. It does I, make the disparity worse. It really it? does. Well, uh, that's not the worst Harry Styles has been, though. Mm. There is a series called My Policeman, which I confess I, I have, haven't seen. I it. haven't properly seen either, but, but I've, I've seen, seen some clips. Bits from, yeah. yeah. And he is opposite. It's about. Uh, um, it's Emma uh, Corrin and somebody else. A gay relationship it? between a policeman and a. Yeah. And I think an artist in the, in the 60s yeah. and the guy he's opposite is a really good actor <laughs> which makes his performance happens. 10 times more wooden yeah. um, so he's it's, I, I see he, he peaks at Dunkirk and then yeah, it's that... Don't Worry Darling and then it's My But you know why that is? Because he doesn't speak? Yeah, it's because yeah. he doesn't say a word. Although he does, but he's he's the one with the sort of the, the slightly tinnier dialogue from that film of like, oh, he's got an accent thicker than sauerkraut sauce, or blimey, and all yeah, this kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah, But he just, he doesn't speak. He's just running away yeah. and looking pretty and everyone's like, wow, wow what a good actor. Good. And yeah. you're like, no, what a good jawline. <laughs> <laughs> That's all that that is. Yeah. Um, I think he's a great, per like, I think he's a great performer, yeah. but I don't think he's a good actor. Mm -hmm. Um... Um, I think obviously you going with your classics, Margot Robbie. Mm -hmm. You know, Bombshell is one of the greatest performances of anything I've ever seen ever. 
Um, what are your opinions on Babylon? This is, by the way, the least structured conversation I will ever have. Yeah, on this I'm broadcast. so sorry. It's absolutely, I'm loving it. Um, I've only seen one clip from Babylon. Oh, you haven't seen the film? No. Oh, right. um, I've, actually, that's a live scene. Two clips from Babylon. One, where she's been lifting up by some people around a lot of people who are just basically having in, an orgy. In, yes. And then um, the other one, where she starts to cry. Uh, on command yeah. all the time, yeah. Uh, both of those are excellent performances by her. Mm. Um, I, I can't tell you where they come in the context of the film. Right. I think it was... I think it was another sort of I, Tonya type, like, typecasting. Mm. I, Tonya, sorry, well, I, I just to- took a I- massive swig <laughs> of my drink. I, Tonya, yes. I, Tonya, which, I, Tonya, which is great, but then it it happens again, basically, in Babylon. Oh, I see. And, and it got to the point, and because Babylon, I call it Babylon, and on, and on, because it's so Cause it does. long, and it's just yeah. not good. Um, but That would point... have been a better joke if I were paying for all attention, <laughs> sorry. <carry on. laughs> for those at the back... Um, <laughs> about two thirds of the way through the film she has yeah. a big freak out at a big posh dinner party um, and it was like the film you know the, the, and the and the, um, uh, and the and the people start all oh, over rushing looking. in and the camera goes and the and they swirly 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 and the music goes and the, but I was so exhausted that I just felt nothing and it was very classic sort of having a freak out moment so mm. everything if I look at Margot Robbie's career outside Margot of, Robbie <coughs> Margot Robbie <laughs> if, I, if I look at the great Margot Robbie's career outside of Babylon then yeah. it's great yeah. yeah okay but I also think that's the, the film's fault yeah no it's a, a lot of damage is fault um yeah I think Lasana Lynch interesting I think she's brilliant I think, everything, she, I think she's great everything think... I've seen her in fantastic mm-hmm. but, I, but I think she peaked in Matilda as uh, Miss Honey yeah I just thought she was brilliant in that yeah yeah um, I, didn't, I didn't know if it was peaked but it's certainly no time a to height. die I was kind of eh. I thought she did well with what she got oh I quite liked her in No Time to Die yeah, yeah I just thought that it could have been a bullshit role True, but that's, you know? but that's where Phoebe Waller-Bridge came in. Yeah. To do, oh, to do, Phoebe Waller-Bridge, to do, to do another to another point entirely. Yeah. Icon, goddess, yeah. Yeah, she's everything great. I want to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, yeah. Here's okay. I've got a list of some of my favourites. Okay. From from the it's quite a long list, so oh, this God. will take some time. Um, so I've, David Tennant's sort of my out and out favourite. Yes. But then I think realistically, when I think about it, mm. Emma Thompson has to be up there. I love Emma Thompson with every inch of my heart, but I think I love her because of her personality, not because of her acting skills. Really? Yeah. Because I think that a lot of the things that she's done, fantastic. Mm. And then she reached a certain age, and she was like, "I'm just going to have fun," mm-hmm. which I completely respect. But it means that a lot of the things that she does are the same. Okay. The thing is, when I think of Emma Thompson, I think of... Sense the, and Sensibility. Well, I think of In the Name of the Father, oh. and then I think of Love Actually, which is... Oh, Love such, Actually! Just the most heartbreaking thing yeah, I've no, ever love seen. Yeah, no, Love Actually. When she just goes, will you just excuse me a minute? And she goes... And she goes and has a breakdown, then comes back. Yeah, yeah. And goes, right, let's go. And I'm like, yeah. oh, oh dear. Yeah. Toby Jones, on the list for me. Right. Because he's sort of more of the versatile category. Right. Which is strange because you would look at him and think that he would end up getting typecast and things, but I don't mm. think he does necessarily. Mm. Andrew Garfield. Yes. Should have won an Oscar at least twice by now. I agree. Idea. Also, I think Angels in America, I don't know if mm. you... I mean, obviously this isn't filmed, but it was filmed and then streamed. Right. Um, that's one of the greatest illegally. performances of anything I've ever seen ever. Right. So, yeah. Um, I have Lupita Nyong'o on my list. I was going to say Lupita yeah. Nyong'o. And the reason is almost exclusively for us. Yeah. Where she, where she was snubbed by every award that was. Um, it's two t- characters in the God, same I film. God, I shat myself watching us. That's a great film. Man. Terrifying. I, I, think, I think I listed it as my favourite horror film. I genuinely, I couldn't sleep that night and I went back to my friend's <laughs> house and we were like, should we just watch Drag Race to clear the yeah. air? And yeah. <laughs> so we watch Cars too. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just two characters that are the same person but they're also shadows of one Yeah, yeah. It makes the subtle differences very, yeah. and you know, obviously the differences are one is insane. One is insane, but but then they also have to mimic each other. Mm. I think the way she does that is it's brilliant. Yeah, 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 I agree. Next on the list, I have yep. Lindsay Duncan. Just for being like a stalwart for so long of like theatre and film. And okay, and yeah. TV and yeah. TV and like, yeah, here comes the ballast. I wouldn't have put Lindsay Duncan on my list, but now that you mentioned her, yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Brilliant, fantastic. Well, last night we were watching Motherland. Yeah. Anna Maxwell Martin. Anna Maxwell Martin. Yeah, she's a bit of an icon. When she turns up in Line of Duty, she completely steals the yeah, show. Yeah, 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 she does. Like, from start to finish. She does. Um, then, also, Death Comes to Pemberley. Oh, I haven't seen Death Comes to Pemberley, oh. but I'm reliably informed it's binge-worthy. Oh, definitely. Right. Get on the binge. Um, the next one is 
inherently correct, mm. but I also come to the caveat that I think sometimes the Oscars were so void of women that she got nominations for The Crack. Right. Meryl Streep. Because she's just wonderful. Mm. But there's times, she's got like 21 nominations and you go, all of them? Really? Yeah. I think that I, I have an interesting, I really, I really adore Meryl Streep. Mm. I put Meryl Streep and Viola Davis in the same category. Okay. I think they're equally as fantastic as each other. She's on the list. However, one has more nominations the other purely because of race issues. Mm-hmm. Um, and I haven't, I've never watched a performance from either of them and thought that was bad. Mm. I've watched them in things and I'm like, oh, that was a bad thing, but you were but good. you were good. Like I watched The Prom. I've not seen The Prom. Oh, never, ever watch it. <laughs> I like don't get me wrong I'm I'm a member of the community and there was too much community for me you know <laughs> oh my god it was so in your face um also James Corden was a crime um oh, well that's, but, that's per. but Meryl Streep in it was immaculate right so yeah though uh Mark Kermode reviewed the Peter Rabbit film of which James Corden plays Peter Rabbit. Peter Rabbit. And was not very complimentary about him and said he was a bit sort of uncharismatic and a little bit lifeless. Oh, that's just and, James Corden. And um, James Corden's parents wrote in saying, Our son is a lot of fun and very nice. Don't be mean. Thank you. And then they read it out on the show and Mark was like, Oh no. Anyway, and then moved on to the next thing. Sure. Christoph Waltz. Let's talk mm. about Christoph Waltz. Oh, I'm going to be really savage. Do you not like him? Well, he just falls into a category of white man that happens to be able to act for me. White man that happens <laughs> to be able to act? It's, it's quite a reductive thing, I would say, about the two-time Oscar winner. No, no, no. I, I do. I think he's brilliant. Um, but also, he doesn't do the kind of movies that I naturally am drawn to. Sure, sure, yeah. So I don't... When I see his name, I'm not like, oh, I've loved everything he's done before, so, so let's go and watch this. this. Yeah. I'm just like, okay, yeah. What a good actor. What a good actor. Maybe one day I'll watch that. So have you seen Inglorious Bastards? No. I would. Okay. Because it, it, there's, a, there's a... And everyone knows which scene I'm about to talk about, but there's a, um, a one-on-one between him and Melanie Laurent, mm. um, which is the most... Pro- one of the most threatening things I've ever seen. Does everyone know the scene you're about to talk about? Yeah. Everyone. Everyone who's seen... Uh, most people who've seen In the it, world? Well, not... Okay. I don't know if Steve from Hull is going to know exactly what I'm talking about. Actually, Steve to be honest, Hull. Steve from Hull probably would know what I'm talking about. But no, the point point being, um, that's a very well-renowned scene of him being uh, polite. and But because of the history between the two of them, um, he manages to do certain things which are just sort of... Which tip it over into being genuinely very, very scary. And okay. because we've been situated more primarily with her so far in the film... Mm. Um, and the opening scene of that film is him going into a, um, a, a house in, uh, in the middle of France somewhere and and working out from uh, talking to the guy who owns the house that there are Jews hidden under the floorboards. Right. And he's just sort of genuinely frightening, mm. but in that kind of way that a lot of sinister people have where their rapport can actually be very, very like friendly and approachable mm. with, the, with the people that they actually like to talk to and the people that they trust. Mm. Um, like it's a very strange comparison, but people always say of Katie Hopkins that if you meet her, if you meet her, then um, she is uh, if you're white, very personable and very friendly, and she comes across very well mannered, and she says, "Oh, it's nice to see you," and all this kind of stuff, and, and acts very. And then the you know she switches on, and suddenly this is a horrendously divisive, disgusting um, person who's capable of saying and, and hor- horrible things and thinking horrible things, mm. and that's exactly the kind of performance that it is there when he's just like there can just be a moment. And then he'll sort of like not switch on a dime because he doesn't go from zero to 100, but he suddenly goes from being like, oh, I feel like I'm in relative safety here to going, oh, no, I'm I'm shitting bricks at the minute. So he's a cinematic Katie Hopkins. The characters are. Sure. The man isn't. The man's lovely. <laughs> very nice fellow. Have you met him? I haven't. But no. I've seen lots of interviews with well, him. Well, there we go. Pleasant. That's the same thing. Mahershala Ali is next on my list. What have they been in? Um, Moonlight. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, Green Book. Yeah. Um, of which he is definitely a leading actor, not mm. a supporting, so that was a baffling choice. Um, I mean, he won for good reason, but yeah. yeah. Um, and, I mean, various other things. He's also, um, uh, Uncle Aaron, the, um, the Prowler in Into the Spider-Verse and Across the Spider-Verse. Oh, that's fun. Um, and I just think he's one of those actors where it's like, it's focus time, and I'm gonna 
I'm going to say everything as it should be said and not chew the scenery at all. I'm sure. just going to do my job and it's going to be it's going to be everything you would want to the best of it and none of the flim flam. That's why okay. I like him. Flim flam. Mm-hmm. Good word. Now we're on to the, uh, this is quite a big one. Right. And I don't know how much you're going to agree with me because I think some of the time this isn't actually I'll just say that it. good. Michael Caine. No. You don't like him. Oh, it's not that I don't like him. I just think um he's the same man a lot of the time every it's like you know when you see like memes of like the rock in like five different films <laughs> these are five different and films and it's like, like the exact same picture yeah. of the rock <laughs> in a jungle in a khaki shirt <laughs> yeah. and you're like mm, okay <laughs> this isn't exactly range yeah, is it yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, I feel that um, and like I said, I don't need I don't need an actor to be like you know completely transformative each time. But I do need to think like okay, well I'm not just watching Michael Caine be <laughs> Michael Caine. True, yeah, true. <laughs> um, it comes from a slightly snobby place because I, I think you're right. In that there's a lot where he plays the same thing, but mm. there's enough for me where he is a, a reinforcing sort of like I'm gonna do acting now, and you're gonna you're gonna feed off that. Now you see me. For example, is a bit of a crap film. It's trying desperately to be Ocean's Eleven, and it's not. Right, but the second one's awful. The second one is dreadful, and Daniel Radcliffe is really bad. Um, But but he, uh, you know, as a as as a as an antagonist, Mm. um, gives it an extra little layer of something. That film wouldn't work without the cast that's in it in the first one. But the 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 prime version of that is his version of Alfred in the Dark Knight trilogy. You've not seen any of them? No. Are you my sister? I'm not really a Batman person. Have you seen any of the Nolan films? He's just films? a broody man. Oh, it's so philosophical, though. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Like, I, can, I can appreciate that, because mm. Anne Hathaway in the last one does speak exclusively in sexual puns, so I can understand. Oh, Anne Hathaway's in it. And she's Catwoman. Oh, watch it if Anne Hathaway's in it. Have you seen Interstellar? She's in that. No. She, everything she says is stupid. No, my point being, uh, Michael Caine is kind of just this sort of you know, you know, you're guaranteed to get someone who can like, like. There's going to be an acting happening because you've got Michael Caine. You know that at least. Like, you've you've got you've got like a, a certainty when you sure. cast Michael Caine. And when you look at um, Tenet, he gets an incredibly wordy scene. Mm. But because of the way that he knows how to navigate his way around a line of speech mm. and addressing one person. Mm. Um, John David Washington is very charismatic in that film but he again pales in comparison when he's opposite Michael Caine mm. over a dinner table Sure, and it's just like having a conversation but... I think Michael Caine does this thing that um, is has kind of been lost mm-hmm. um, they used to teach in drama schools um, like stagecraft okay. which is um, so for example if we were talking um, there, there are some things that you would learn in stagecraft, which you don't really learn today. Today you learn, oh, you know, be present in the scene and like this is how to make it realistic and feel what you feel and blah, blah, mm-hmm. blah. And the the idea of stagecraft is that you, um, there are some things that you just do because they just work. Mm-hmm. And the ex- the explanation for doing them is because it's the done thing. Right. So if I were doing a comedy moment with you and I had a drink in hand, mm-hmm. I might like go to take a drink and then stop and look back at you and yeah. like kind of, kind of double take. And that's a very, that's not a natural thing. I wouldn't go and naturally to do that, but it's a stagecraft thing that I know will get a laugh that will return back to me. Mm-hmm. And it's not really taught in a modern sense. Um, and I think Michael Caine does that for screen. Right. Like you see him talking a lot about like, okay, well I will look into this eye yeah. of yours in yeah, order yeah, yeah. to, you know, and you see, and when he gives any interviews or talks about the way that he, um, the way that he does his craft and the way that he uses his skills, mm. they are very in a sort of stagecraft for screen manner. Mm-hmm. They're like, these are just things that are done and I will do them and they do work. Right. Um, and so I feel like a lot of those things, but that's probably why we get a similar performance from him yeah. on multiple occasions. Because he's, he's like, well, I've got, I've got this thing, yeah. which is in my rostra. Yeah. This is my, you know, my stagecraft in inverted commas. Yeah. This is what works. I'm going to look into your left eye. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Mm-hmm. That's how things work. I'm not going to blink. Mm. Even though only psychos don't blink. <laughs> he was like, if you don't blink, people believe you more. And you're like, no, they just think you have a problem. But, like it just unless it's silent in your eye, of course. Yeah, uh, and that, obviously unless you're blinking or unless you're crying. <laughs> but like the 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 thing that I think means that he gives similar 
performances, yeah. however good, yeah. means it's because he's... He's got the sort of methodology. Exactly, that he yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, that's, that's a very good point. But I have seen him be different as well. That's the thing. Sure. I have seen him do different. So, so Cider House Rules, which he mm. wins his second Oscar for. Sure. I wouldn't have actually given him the Oscar, but it's a great performance. It's a completely different character. It's just mm. sort of, again, sort of benign. Is he sinister? Is he not? Yeah. Is he doing the right thing? Isn't he? And he's very good at yeah. playing it on the line. Um, also, here's me slating all these people being like, hi, I'm 24 <laughs> at the beginning of my career. I go, I know nothing. But, well, yeah. I get that all the time when I do this podcast. I go, uh, note for Mr. Kane. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> sorry, Mr. Nolan. I've got yeah. some script notes for you, actually. Uh, uh, Michael, if you could just think about this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, no, I, I just think, and the last film he did as well, which was about the, um, it was very similar to that, um, The Unlikely Pilgrimage of Harold Fry. I can't remember the name of it, but he was much lauded for it. And it, I haven't seen it, but it sounds like it was a much sort of more vulnerable performance than we're quite used well, to. Well, that was a useful him. sentence. Here's a film that I haven't Here's seen. Here's a film I haven't seen. Other no, but the, the point is, if you want to see a different Michael Caine, that may be the one to go for. Okay. Because he's, he's but you don't know that because you haven't seen I haven't, it. I haven't seen it. Anyway. Everyone says that that is the case. Okay. Um, it, this is a personal one for me. Right. Really personal, but I believe it wholeheartedly. Is it you? It's Yeah, it's me. Yeah. <laughs> this is a go, personal one for me. Watch, yeah. It's me. I think I'm on, on the Michael Caine. Uh, my long history with... Uh, <laughs> no, it's Jessica Hines. Oh, yes. Uh, when's she ever been bad? Have you watched uh, There She Goes? No. There She Goes is a TV series uh, with David Tennant and Jessica Hines mm -hmm. as a married couple. Oh, uh, oh, oh. And they have a... An autistic kid? Um, she's, she's not autistic. She has a... Um, she has a learning disability, right, okay. but um, it is she is she has something called Dirk One A, which they realise, which is a chromosomal disorder, right. and it is one of the most beautiful performances by two people that I have ever watched mm -hmm. in my life. Like it's, I wouldn't say that it's something that naturally you would like binge mm. because it's quite dark, dark and quite deep, and it's but also beautifully funny. Yeah, like the way that they manage to make like jokes and light of something that is so pressing mm -hmm. um i think is gorgeous and it's two people there's a there's one scene where they're having a conversation david tennant and jessica hines mm -hmm. and they're talking about um how much they love this child right and how much they hate this child and it is the most beautiful, honest and frank conversation. And, she, you know, Jessica Hines lies there and says, I feel like I've been robbed mm -hmm. of a child. Yeah. And, and it's an incredible conversation to see happen between two people because mm -hmm. it's something that you almost don't believe could be said out loud. Mm -hmm. And then they show through the actions and through the, all the speech of this, this series that they love this girl so much and they do anything to save her and all, the, all this kind of stuff. But that one moment and that conversation where two people are just being honest is like one is, is one of the best scenes I've ever watched. Yeah? Yeah, I advise. Well, I have to give it a view. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I've only got a few more and then we'll move on to like, if yeah. we can think of examples of like specific performances. Okay, say your next few and I'll just say yes or no. Okay, Rowan Atkinson. Because he's, um, it, the physicality of that man is, is unbelievable. Uh, I think he's one of the greatest Com comic... Comedic actors. Comic yeah. actors. Yeah. 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 Um, Bruno Gantz. Who's that? Have you ever seen Downfall? No. You know a Hitler reacts to GCSE German or GCSE biology? Yes. Him. Oh, um, I, I haven't seen enough of his work to make a comment. Right, okay. Uh, outside, even outside of Downfall, which I think In, is brilliant. Outside of Hitler. Hitler. Yeah, he's, he's, he's supreme. Okay. Um, Heath Ledger, obviously limited. As the Joker. Uh, um, as the Joker in Brokeback Mountain. Mm. in you know lots of things you know casting Heath Ledger as the Joker was a very strange yeah. thing you wouldn't have put sure. those two, two together but then but he was that came out of it yeah yeah um, Francis McDormand oh yeah because it's, it's Francis, Francis McDormand. McDormand Burn After Reading is one of my favourite films Nomadland or Burn After Reading which a lot of people have been calling it Nomadland was great oh unbelievable um, Three Billboards I'm equally seeing. as exquisite um, you'd like Three Billboards it's Martin McDonough Women Talking Women Talking mm -hmm. um so yeah, I mean she's always. Even though she's in there for about three minutes. Yeah, yeah. but she's and she's another one of those people where it's like, oh, you casted Francis McDormand. Oh, you're going to get a good scene at mm. least out of this, you know. Mm. Um, second last one mm. is Paul Dano. I think he's been flown a little bit under the radar in terms of recognition. I don't think he's flown under anything. I think he's brilliant. Right. Okay. Because even from the beginning, it's like Little Miss Sunshine. Yeah. He's he's brilliant in and he's he's this sort of. Mm. Like, he's an angsty teen, but he's not less like, oh, I'm going to play angsty teen mm. right now. And then, he, and then he's a sort of nuanced and stuff. And then all the stuff after that, even... Um, one of my favourite performances from his 12 Years a Slave, because he right. yeah, is yeah, yeah. such a wuss. Yeah. And it's only because he has this sort of 
racial power that he has any kind of confidence at all without it he is a complete flimsy kind of waste yeah. of skin war and peace he does this beautiful line mm. between sensitive and trying to live up to mm-hmm. an expectation and a reputation and i think that's very very well done yeah and of course then there's there will be blood and the riddler and then the riddler and swiss army man uh, oh, yes, Swiss Army Man. There's so many of his mm. bits and pieces that I just really, really love. Mm. Um, and the last one, I think this is kind of a non-negotiable. Right. N- at this point now, okay. is Killian Murphy. His entire filmography, you go from uh, Disco Pigs. I think Oppenheimer is the culmination of every performance mm. he's ever done. So you, you, a Disco Pigs, Sunshine, Wind That Shakes the Barley, 28 Days Later, um, Inception, Peaky Blinders. All this stuff kind of culminates like draws on every little bit of experience to give three hours of all over the place trauma mm. and, and intrigue and he's benefited I think by the fact that it's kind of the first time an IMAX camera has been used to just study a face okay but he, he, he's undeniably superb in that I think Kelly Murphy is a fantastic actor I don't think I've seen enough of his stuff to know about his performances in terms of like a well-rounded knowledge of okay. him as an actor mm-hmm. But I think that what I've seen him in, I've been impressed by. Mm-hmm. Let me just briefly mention the film that he did. I can't remember the name of it, so let me pause for Google here. Talk amongst yourselves. We'll edit this out. We will. This is a very good show to wear. <laughs> Wait, <or? laughs> one more. Wait, all. Your, one more of your finest J to O's, please. <laughs> yes, we're getting excited today. All your listeners are going to hear is me slurping this J to O. Uh, all my <laughs> listeners, all six of them. All, hey, seven. Breakfast on... <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, I did some research and I've had listeners from Brazil, the Philippines, uh, Malaysia, Thailand, uh, India, uh, Belgium, the Netherlands, Germany. I've had lots of international listens. Mm. It's quite exciting. Is that because they don't know what you're talking about? Maybe. <laughs> but it's all, it may also be the fact that, like, that when I looked, looked at the numbers and some of them next to the country was like one. So yeah. maybe they listened to it like once and then gone, no, it's not for me. And just gone and so never where, seen where was it that again. That was from? generic Central European. That was generic. Okay, um, okay. I mean, it was specifically Italian. And I did have some Italian listening. Uh, okay. Um, Breakfast on Pluto is the film I was talking about never where he it. plays. Patrick, who's a young trans woman. Right. This is 2005. This is really ahead of the modern curve mm. of, of, of talking about those kind of issues. Obviously, it's not, you know, I mean, that's nothing new by then. Yeah. But um, it was um, a forward-thinking film in a time when that would have... It, 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 people still laughing at that. Sure. And um, he makes this beautiful distinction between um, feminine and effeminate because you think okay. there's, a big, there's a difference there. And he, and he doesn't play it stereotypically or kind of uh, as appearance by numbers he mm. sort of methodically goes through all the stages and, and the difficulties of trying to find mm. that person within the character um and also you know they enter this new they go move to london and it's this new environment where they're alone and mm. it's a really kind of apart from it being just like a great film it's yeah. a really really wonderful performance and a great view at, at okay that. i would like to add one go on then to your list please do Mark Rylance. Ooh, I like Mark Rylance. I just think I've seen him on stage. I've seen him in film. Mm-hmm. Um, I've never disliked anything that I've seen of him. I've seen him in Shakespeare. I've seen him in modern. I've seen him in naturalistic. I've seen him not say anything at all. And mm-hmm. I think every time he's fantastic. I think I watched his um, As You Like It right. uh, from the Globe. Uh, he was perfect and he again drew that line between being like effeminate and mm-hmm. and, and feminine mm-hmm. in that in that p- perfect way um when he was playing olivia dunkirk dunkirk is great i thought he gave a beautiful performance mm-hmm. um jerusalem obviously well i was about to say this my a-level drama monologue mm. was the um talking the story about the giants coming yeah, over yeah, the yeah. hill and it was largely inspired by him doing it mm. and I recently watched um, I recently saw Dr. Samwise at the Harold Pinter yeah um, and I, I, although the production as a whole I thought was m- momentarily flawed I thought he was gorgeous like mm-hmm. he was fantastic mm-hmm. um, yeah let us not forget Bridge of Spies which is what he wins the Oscar for sure which I was this sort of wonderful kind of Mm. subtle mm. performance um, obviously the, the leading line out of it the great line which is um, 
aren't you worried? And he just says, would it help? And then, and then that's, sure. that's it. Yeah. So let's move on to like specific performances that we remember then. Yeah. Like if you, if you can think of like sort of the past few years, what mm. are some of the, the, the film performances that stand out to you? If I was just to say best recent performances, what would okay. your head go to? Um, I probably should have prepared before I did Well, this. I should have given you more warning. Maybe. Yeah. Um, it's because the other actress cancelled on me. Yeah. It? No, it's because we were in the kitchen. I was like, I've got an hour now. I want to back. Okay. Uh, one performance I will never get tired of mm. is Margot Robbie's performance in Bombshell. Okay. Um, as a woman who essentially goes into Fox news Mm -hmm. as somebody with ambition as somebody who wants to climb to the top no matter what as somebody who doesn't really um who doesn't worry about the morals that fox quite happily dismiss right so So, a bit naive in that not necessarily naive but just in that she's grown up in quite a conservative family and so that she's she's very happy to just kind of say what she thinks she's happy to do that fox thing Mm -hmm. of being like oh yeah but you know my whole family vote for trump like come on no one would actually vote for you know hillary clinton that that kind of thing Mm -hmm. um and through making friends with kate mckinnon's character um and then having a sort of sort of fair relationship in that regard um that starts to change her view of things in the oh somebody who i know and care about in this phrase is somebody that i am a friend I'm friends with is you know another way of leaning and mm-hmm. so that does that put everything that I've thought into question yeah and then the issue obviously surrounding Roger Ailes yeah um I think she plays it perfectly as somebody who goes in thinking that she knows everything and lands slightly over her head mm-hmm. and then has to deal with the repercussions and doesn't quite know how to mentally cope with the repercussions of that. Right. I think that it's done absolutely beautifully. Mm-hmm. And I think that she draws this gorgeous line between wanting to show up and show herself off and feeling f- afraid as a woman when she's told to show herself off. Okay. I think that's really, really well done. Mm-hmm. Mm. Kristen Stewart in Spencer. Sure. Um, she made me not care about Elizabeth Debicki. Which is nuts because I love Elizabeth Debicki. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure I, I I've not actually watched that much of The Crown with her in it. Um, mm. but I'm I'm sure she is brilliant. But um, I don't really find myself being that drawn because I was so I, I just watched Spencer and went that's it that's done I don't need any more of this. Oh, wow. I'm I'm that's that's perfect for me. Um, you. You've done everything that I wanted to happen there. It was a beautiful change for her. Yeah. And also it's because that that film as well, in such a small space of time, captures so many of the dilemmas that she was facing mm. that I don't think I need it played out in a whole sort of beginning to end of relationship kind of thing. Like it was so tightly contained. But mm. everything, you know, we got the fact that everything around her in the establishment was forcing mm. her down one way and then she was feeling a different way and she mm. had... Um, outside sources like Sally Hawkins' character that she could go and confide in and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. And I just I was just watching it thinking, I'm... Uh, Entranced. I, I'm in, I've forgotten who you are. Yeah. Um, and that's exactly what the, I want. Anthony Hopkins in the... Re- in the uh, not the reader, the... Um, the father? The father, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, he is brilliant. He's uh, he's fantastic. I, I think a lot of things about that hot... The script, this, the screenplay, the cinematography, everything, mm-hmm. made that film beautiful yeah but you felt the confusion that he felt Mm -hmm. and i think if an actor makes you feel exactly the same thing that they're feeling that's their job done yeah kate winslet in the reader i think that's one of the most beautiful performances interesting because she gives away enough that you can tell that she's in love Mm -hmm. and she holds back enough to so that you can tell that there's something wrong Right. And I think that's quite a hard line to draw mm-hmm. as a as an actor to be able to give away a certain thing but be keeping something to yourself. To keep something to yourself when you're trying to show it to other people as an actor yeah. is a very difficult thing to do. Mm-hmm. And so to be able to hold something very, very, very closely mm-hmm. so that we can see that she's holding something but we don't know what it is, mm-hmm. is but, th- but th- then that she's giving us so much more is really impressive to me okay yeah fair enough um there are probably others i'm sure there are uh 
Tony Collette in Hereditary. I haven't seen it. Oh, she is just the best. She's so brilliant. One of the best performances in the last decade, mm. easily. Uh, the film I don't get on with that well because for three quarters of it, I think it's perfect. Mm. And then at the end, it sort of starts to go all a bit all mm. over the place and I start to hate it a bit. But um, she's undoubtedly great. The same as I mentioned before with Lupita Nyong'o and us. Sure. Um, but uh, I really love a measured performance, which is something okay. I've come to, to realise, which is why Hell or High Water is one of my favourite films. Okay. It's, uh, the, it's got a front three of Chris Pine. Yeah. Uh, ben Foster mm. and Jeff Bridges mm-hmm. and it's this beautiful study of masculinity and uh, how to show emotion within it and it's done in the most perfect way so you've got these two brothers who are bank robbers and they're dealing with what to do after the death mm. of their mother um, and then you've also got Jeff Bridges who is um, uh, a, a deputy on the edge of mm. retirement mm. Um and he is paired with um, a, uh, uh, a Hispanic partner. Yeah. Um, and there's lots of themes of, you know, the, the Southern American treatment towards mm. race and stuff. But actually, that's also mainly about kinship. Um, and every performance is like, no one goes over the top. Everyone's just who they're meant to be. Chris mm. Pine is a very reserved character. Ben Foster's character is actually a bit more sort of wild and, and kind of okay. let free. Jeff Bridges is actually properly amazing. Okay. I, f- I forgot for most, almost all of the film that it was Jeff Bridges doing a very heavy Southern accent okay. because he was just that old cop to me yeah. and it was kind of the perfect thing. Um, this is a rogue one. Mm. Steve Carell in The Big Short because it is okay. him, but it's not him. No, no, I know what you mean. Like it's like it's like The Office, but angry. I don't know if I I don't know if I'd call it one of the greatest performances. No, I think he I think Steve Carell is brilliant. I think Steve Carell has this beautiful thing of just being able to let loose mm-hmm. as an actor, and so you he's able to do comedy gorgeously because yep. he just doesn't have that. He doesn't have a stick up his ass essentially, so he's just happy to <laughs> yeah. sort of go for it. And the big short was that combined with the weight of having made the decision that yeah, affected yeah, so many people's lives yeah yeah i i i i, I get it i wouldn't ag- wouldn't have said it. i wouldn't have said it no. but i i get it Fair enough. um if i I, do you know, I i keep saying random times mm-hmm. to my friends and no one gets it yeah mel do you know what i mean no i can tell it's steve carell it's a blooper from the office where he walks into the room um, yeah. and um he says something and then Melanie from off screen goes, yeah. yeah, hello. Someone said my name. And he just goes, hi, how are you? And she's like, we're filming, by the way. And in the next take, he walks in and just goes, Mel. <laughs> okay. Um, so no one else seems to get it, but I, I do. Oh. No, I like, oh, Toby, can you uh, shut the door on your way up? <laughs> <laughs> just the noise you made when you stood up. <laughs> I think Saoirse Ronan in Lady Bird. Lady Bird. Love I Lady think Bird. is the perfect example of feeling righteous in teenhood. She doesn't make it a stereotype of a teenager. Mm -hmm. And actually, to be fair, I think she goes on my list of like great, great. Yeah, I I think she manages to draw the line between like, she's so sure she's correct Mm. in everything that she does. Mm -hmm. Like as, as somebody of that age and somebody of that disposition would be. And the relationship that she creates with her mother and and the way that the reflection at the end of the movie I think yeah to ha- to to ground yourself that much in the character that you so obviously believe everything you're doing is correct like I, mm. I that's the goal of being an actor for me mm-hmm. and so I think she does that perfectly mm-hmm. okay what's question for you oh, Mr. Question Man reversed. um Uno reverse <laughs> um what do you think makes a good actor when you watch somebody on screen? Literally my next fucking <laughs> um, I, uh, I would say that the thing that makes a good actor mm. is somebody who is in understanding of, of what their role is actually about. Um, How very loose. And, uh, but, but, but it is loose, but it's not. And the reason why it's not is because there are so many performances that I see where people just decide, oh, I'm... Uh, X person in X place mm. doing X thing. Sure. So this is probably how I should do it. Uh-huh. Um, and then you end up chewing the scenery and it all gets a bit mm. heavy and it all is a bit... But when you are aware that, you know, you have um, uh, an emotional part to play and you have uh, an important part to play in terms of 
you know story and the other characters and how they how they work around it if you are capable of then essentially f- making us feel how we're meant to feel without making it look like this is a performance mm. that's when i'm on board which okay. is why i really hated babylon because mm. it obviously is a film about actors mm. but even yeah when but we're not... kind of annoying to do films about yeah but i mean even when they're not acting in the film mm. they're still evidently doing a performance even mm. brad pitt who i love I just think he's like the coolest person in the so world. So naturalism is what you look for. I'm looking for naturalism, unless you know, unless it's an inherently mm. bang on the This is not a naturalistic film, mm. and they're, they're doing a different thing. Then of sure. course they'll do a different thing. That's the point of it. But if they're trying to purvey someone to me, mm. I want to I want to believe that they could exist whilst also appreciating the point of them. Okay. And a lot of acting, I don't often see the point of them, which is why when the films. Have you don't see the point of character. I don't see the point. I, 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 they, they haven't. Or their action. Their action. They oh, so you have to see, see the, the reason behind the action. Yeah. Okay. I, I have to see why the choices they've made are in the situation that they are. Right. So you have to see them reasonably act. Reasonably act. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Great. Um, <laughs> but where, to I, that I, one. I don't want to see is Jared Leto in no House of Gucci. Jared. Okay. No mind. Um, there is a line. When he's having a scene with Lady Gaga, who mm. is, her accent slips a bit, but she's fun. Yeah, yeah. And he has the line, stop, stop, you're going to make me cry. These are just mock-ups. This is how he says it. Please say that with less emotion. This is how, but, but that's the line. Okay. This is how he says it. <clears throat> oh, stop, stop, you're going, to, you're going to make me cry. And all these, these are just mock-ups. And I'm sat there watching One more this. time for people at the back. <clears throat> no, 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 no. no, 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 no. <laughs> um, and I'm, I'm just going, what, what, what is the point of you? For those who don't have a visual on Dom, he's rubbing his face and nearly crying. I'm, I'm upset. Um, I mean, I hate Jared Leto as it is, but I see it all the time. And actually, I see it a lot. In, so Tar, for example. Uh, Tar was, is the result of... It's, this is basically Kermo's opinion of Jack Sparrow, is that it's a performance uh, at the, as a result of a director who's gone, oh, I'm, dire- I'm directing, I'm directing, I'm directing it. Right. Just, just let him do the thing, let right. him do the thing. And then Kate Blanchett does this sort of... What I think is this ridiculously pompous performance because she's gone, right, okay, so I'm this sort of like... Uh, Don't do that. This mad composer who no, okay. who is uh, she's a accent. woman in her field, so she's got to be mad. She's got to be crazy because it would drive you crazy. So she can't be normal. So <laughs> everything she does, she's going to be absolutely fucking mad. And I'm 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 just 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 sit down. Yeah. Okay. Just for a second. And when you're not conducting, because mm. I can appreciate everyone, people, composers get emotional and and conductors get mm. yeah get riled up, but but they're not always like that. And you don't have to be like that when you're opening the fridge or walking down the corridor. She basically walks down the corridor going, <laughs> mm. just walk. <laughs> There's no need to do all of this extra crap. So you don't like the idea of um, overperformance? You over, like, you overperforming like... and, oh, I'm doing some acting right now. Um, bug me. Okay. No, not, not, not even in the sense that no, like... No, I, I see what you mean. Like, everyone look at me, I'm acting. But just when people be like, I'm going to say this line and this mm. is how the line is said. Moving on. Yeah. I want to engage with people right so now that i've <laughs> done about five minutes of spiel from a non-professional let's yeah. talk to someone who knows what they're talking about what makes uh, what makes what's the difference between a good performance uh-huh. and a great performance okay uh, i think a good performance is something that is um well thought through um well prepared preconceived and completely in character mm-hmm I think great performance is somebody who responds acutely to whoever they're in a scene with um, or whatever surrounds them. That's something that, for example, the person at the top of both of our lists, David Tennant, mm-hmm. I think that's something that he does. I think that's something that Saoirse Ronan does. I think that's something that, that they manage to do perfectly is that if you're having a conversation with somebody, you don't know what they're going to say. You don't know how you're going to feel about what they say until they say it. Yeah. So if you said to me right now, I hate chocolate. I wouldn't have an opinion on the thing that you just said until you said it, mm-hmm. okay? And th- at that point, as soon as you go, I hit chocolate, I-, I can go, what? You fucking psychopath. <laughs> what? I'm allowed to swear on this, aren't I? Oh, absolutely. Oh, okay. I mean, you absolute fuck with. What are you talking about, okay? 
But only after you've said that to me can I have that reaction, okay? And there are some some performances that I watch and I think you've had an opinion on this before you knew about it. Okay. So you've seen this person. You don't know really who this person is. You've had a conversation with this person. But it's like you know the end of the the film or the play. or but You're responding to this person or you're thinking so much about your own performance mm-hmm. that you're not responding to this person accordingly in the time that they're giving you what they're giving you. Right. And therefore, or you've planned your response and it's unreasonable. Right. I want to watch somebody who they receive news or they have a conversation and I think you're being informed mm-hmm. every step of the way by by this other person on how you then react to that. Right. This is such a base way of saying that like, acting is reacting. Um, but it is in the sense of if you're having a conversation with someone, you don't know the next thing that they're going to say to respond to it. So if you, and obviously as an actor, you have to learn your lines. You have to prepare how... You, you have to prepare your character, how your character feels about lots of different things, how your character reacts to things. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't know how they feel about that until they've heard it. Right. And there are, there are people, I think, who pre-prepare to... Not too much, but there, there are people who pr- know how they're going to feel about something. Before they're meant to And they it. don't allow themselves to realise that. Yeah. They simply know that they feel it. That's interesting. Yeah. Because yeah. some of my favourite scenes ever are scenes where someone starts off as one in one mindset mm-hmm. and leaves as a completely different one yeah um, uh, off the top of my head there is a scene in Peaky Blinders mm. where Killian Murphy confronts Tom Hardy yeah. and he's very very certain that Tom Hardy is the is responsible mm. for the disappearance of his child mm. gets to the end of it and he gets completely put in his place mm. and he stood in the same place and he's wearing the same expression mm. But then he carries himself completely differently as he mm. realises that he's sort of been humble a little bit mm-hmm. and he's sort of uh, in this sort of fervour mm. has gone a bit mad. Yeah. And stuff like that um, mm. where you you actually watch somebody change their mind or yeah. watch someone do something as a result of something else mm. is much, much nicer yet than just sort of being playing mm. out the scene because we all know where it's got to go yeah, yeah. For, for example I think Shuti Gatwa in Sex Education mm-hmm. does this really well yeah I think um, he so Shuti's a person who he really creates a character he really builds his character and mm-hmm. he knows exactly how a character would respond but he doesn't respond until it's, it's given to yeah. him um, and so for example like you know all these conversations with Otis he doesn't react in the right way he doesn't like he doesn't preempt anything that's going to happen mm-hmm. until it happens and then he reacts accordingly. I think mm-hmm. that's really, yeah, I think that's the way forward. Yeah. Okay, flip side. Yeah. What performances do you not get on with? Um, specifics. If very you can specific. Think of, if you can think of times when you've watched someone and gone, that was awful. That was rubbish. Or I don't agree with everyone sort of liking this or, mm. or something. Okay. I feel like we were talking about this yesterday. Mm. Cameron Diaz in The Holiday. <laughs> um, yeah. I just think that's a perfect example of like here's a here's a black or white character. You know what I mean? Like here mm. is a yeah. I'm gonna rephrase that because that's not what I meant that to no, but it, sound like his here's, here's, one character here's or the other. A polar yeah, choice yeah, yeah. of one character. I will play everything in this slightly uptight, mm-hmm. frivolous mindset i have learned my lines and let me repeat them to you Mm. i think it's bad Mm -hmm. and i think that's kind of the that's kind of the allure of the film isn't it like it's a lovely film that has a you know that's warm and happy and has a bad script so long (laughs) but um i don't think i don't think cameron i don't think cameron diaz is good Mm -hmm. in that i often cite the few years ago, Jessica Chastain won an Oscar for The Eyes of Tammy Faye. I didn't see it. It's a performance done by hair and makeup. Right. Of course she's not bad. Of course mm. she isn't. She's Jessica Chastain. Yeah. But in a year when Spencer was about right. for that to win... Oh, you're just in love with really Kristen Stewart. Insane. It's not even Kristen Stewart, because yeah. I'm not a massive fan of like the Twilight films and stuff. I know there's some people, a lot of people out there who defend them. Yeah. Um, I personally don't. Mm. Um it's not like I love Kristen Stewart, but I love her in that. Mm. And it's it's just one of those things. Like, The Eyes of Tammy Faye was such a strange film. Even Andrew Garfield was was good in it, but strange in it. Right. And the entire thing was just odd. Um, 
there's been there's been a couple of other bits and pieces that I just mm-hmm. I haven't got on with. Um, I'm thinking primarily a, a, a very late, very recent times mm. to Jamie Lee Curtis in Everything Everywhere All at Once. Oh, did you not like that? I don't get it. Oh. I really, really don't understand it because it felt... The film of it, her? It, well, I got the film. Mm. I got it. Mm. I, I liked it. Mm. I didn't love it. I liked it. Mm. I didn't get her. Mm. I thought it was easy acting what she was doing. Mm. I didn't think she was particularly emotionally stimulating or particularly challenged by what she had to do. Mm. She was just kind of given a bunch of weird scenarios. And said, run. And said, and say, go with it. Mm. Yeah. And just do whatever. And she does do whatever. And you know, it it services the film, Mm. but it's not an Oscar winning performance. Right. I mean, come on. Mm. That was the, the banshees of inner sharing was, and to have Kerry Condon sitting opposite and, you know, Mm. in a different chair while Mm. Jamie Lee Curtis gets up. And that was just an insult because, that but like the Banshees of Inisherin is is four perfect performances mm. um, by every single one of them, mm. um, and this sort of brings me onto a different point though. I think you have to draw a distinction quite a lot of the time between people playing people who exist and people who are playing characters who don't. Right, because most of the time, when people are playing characters who exist. Mm. The measure, as in you mean real people? As in real people. Okay. The measure of how good it is, is the likeness of them. Now, that's not all there is to it. Mm. But when people go, oh, I didn't see Rami Malek, I saw Freddie Mercury. Yeah, so did I, he's really good in it. Mm. Um, but that's a completely different kind of performance there. Because what yeah. you're having to do is try and recapture the magic of somebody else. Mm-hmm. Rather than come come at it from a, from a new angle and and be a character who who has to make emotion mm. and can't rely on the little um beats and clicks of of of, of someone we already know yeah um like uh at eternity's gate is a film which sort of went under the radar a bit um i don't know it but well it, it's slightly under the radar but willem dafoe got an oscar nomination for right, it right okay playing, i should know playing it. vincent van gogh oh okay and he is Willem Dafoe. He was really, really good. Okay. You will know it because it's the meme of Willem Dafoe looking up at the sky, looking terrified. Yep. That film. I see. Um, which is an elite gif. Right. But yeah, yeah, yeah. you know that's that to me is a great performance, but it's a completely different performance to something like Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy, mm. which is about a group of people who can't come to terms with their own fallibility mm. and they can't come to terms with the fact that they are running out of time sure. and that they are becoming obsolete themselves okay. and feeling all these, the pressure of all these people on their shoulders. But They're both great, but I have to differentiate between the two because people are good at mimicry. Mm. And, and, and obviously, I'm not, I'm not just diluting those performances down to mimicry. There's a lot more that goes on with them and they have to then be emotional with it and mm. make sure they get the film beats right as well. Yeah. It's a difficult task. But, you know, you could conceivably see the Oscars... I know they didn't, but they could have very easily had a run where Rami Malek won and then Taron Egerton won and sure. then Austin Butler won uh, or mm. Amadei Almas won. I personally would have said she won. But, like, mm. you know... I think there's a there's a there's a higher um, there's a higher like level of acting that comes mm. from a character that's been created and written for you, but you've got to be the portrayer of that emotion mm. because what you're doing then is making that character um, related to that emotion in everyone's mind, yeah. related to how you felt from it, rather than okay. going, he's a good Elvis, but is, sure. he, is he the best Elvis? Right, all I that you. kind of thing. I, get you. I didn't enjoy watching Emma Watson in Little Women. Okay. Because not only was the accent missing for me, which mm. kind of puts you off when you watch it, but I thought that she was alongside some absolute powerhouses. Mm-hmm. Um, she was alongside like Saoirse Ronan, Florence Pugh, and you know Timothy Chalamet and everyone. She's she's a Meryl sur- Streep. Ra- Ma- Meryl Streep. She's surrounded by these absolute titans of the industry, and I just don't think that she lived up to it. I just think that, again, she kind of made a choice of, oh, a little happy me and my little happy life. Mm-hmm. And I think that Emma Watson is a fantastic person. Mm. Like, I, I watch her outside of acting, and I think you are a beautiful person that should be on this earth for fantastic reasons. Yeah. Um, 
However, I watch her in most things outside of Harry Potter and um, that one film that she did, The Colony, which I thought was good. Right. But I, I watch it outside of those two things and I'm like, oh, I'm not sure if I'm... I'm not sure if I'm on board here. Yeah. I just don't... I don't really, truly believe... And it's also because... I think Emma Watson is a, a good person. Mm. She's a very good person. So when I watch her in a role that is like, I am inherently good, I just... I think she makes a stereotype out of that. Mm-hmm. I, I think that she has done great performances. I mean, she is kind of Hermione Granger, which is why, yeah. you know, Hermione Granger is amazing. But I think she has done great performances, and I think she is a gorgeous, gorgeous person who uses an incredible intellect for very positive reasons. Yeah. But I think the reason that I like Emma Watson is because of the person that she is, not because of the actress that she is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she did, there was a film that she did called The Circle, I think, with yeah. Tom Hanks. I got 10, 15 minutes in and I had to yeah, stop watching she it. wasn't fantastic. But like you say, it's difficult to not like her as a person. Yeah, she's a very likeable person. Mm. But also I find, it, I find it a bit weird to like say about actors and performances that I don't like. Because mm. I think that also sometimes it makes it really difficult. If you're given a script mm. that hands you a gift on a page, mm. it's easy to make that brilliant. Mm-hmm. Or if you're given something that's very close to you, yeah. it's really easy to make that a believable and fantastic performance. Yeah. Whereas if you're given something... So if, let's not lie. The ho- the script of the holiday is fairly shit. <laughs> okay? It's lovely and it's happy and it's Christmas and blah, blah, blah. But, but it's like it's not how people talk to each other. Mm. Um, and so I think to make that... So I can say, you know, I didn't like Cameron Diaz in the holiday. But also, I just didn't really like the script of the holiday. Yeah. Um, got to, you do have to also make the distinction between when the film's good, when the film's and good, and when, when the, the acting yeah. is yeah. And the only reason that I say that about Emma Watson is because I believe I, everybody else made that script very believable, and everybody yeah. else, you know, did a lot of things. And and obviously, you know, Greta Gerwig is Greta Gerwig, and, but she worked with all of those people in the same way. And you have performances like Saoirse Ronan, mm. and then you have performances like Emma Watson, and I just feel that they're not in the same yeah. realm. Yeah. I think that that pre-existing thing, mm. and the good and the bad, that is, is, is sort of like a double-edged sword. Yeah. Because if you've got a character that people, a, a person that people know, uh-huh. then you can just go, oh, they're just doing an impression of that. But the flip side is, yeah. the scrutiny is a million times higher. Yeah. So you have to be better at it. Mm. Um, whereas there's no preconception for a new character, so yeah. there's no existing scrutiny going into it. Yeah, sure. Um, I have a problem when people say it was just boring because nothing happened. When films are about people talking to each other, mm. like Steve Jobs. Uh, or uh-huh. or um, women talking. Women talking, yeah. for example. Um, one of my favourite films mm-hmm. uh, is um, When Harry Met Sally. And there's, not actually, oh, a, there's really? not actually a lot that happens in that, but it's genuinely, genuinely well written. Oh, I don't like it. Do you not? No. I think it's properly, and properly good. And it's not good. because nothing happens. It's because I can't stand Harry. You don't like Billy Crystal? Oh, God. I love Billy Crystal. I just can't stand him in that. In that. Oh, no. I just think he's a bit of a dick. No. Yeah. They're, both as, they're both as dickish as each other. That's the point no, of it. I don't know. I'm just... I also think it's because I I I look at yeah I'm no not a fan not a fan well I love it but again the point being not a lot happens in it but the talking has to be right yeah and the reason why I like it is because I think the talking's right mm. um, the prestige could have fallen off if it wasn't for the fact that Hugh Jackman and Christian Bale got some of the talking right right like if you didn't believe Hugh Jackman at the point where he said I don't care about my wife anymore I care about his secret. And right. that was just a line. Mm. Then you'd be like, well, what is this? Mm. But the fact that, it, you, you know, you believe it all means that you get... Like, the big short could be boring mm. c- because it's written so heavily and densely. Mm. Um, funnily, mm. by Adam McKay. But um, it's then delivered right. And Oppenheimer was just about people talking in the end. Yeah, and I but... still believed everyone talking. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, obviously, there was a bit about the bomb in the middle of it. Mm. But after the bomb, it's just talking. It is, it is, it's talking about a very, very significant thing, though. Yeah, yeah, but, but, but point being, it would be mm. very easy to just write lines out from a history textbook and make that the script. Yeah. And in many, in some ways, that's what they did in the, 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 the trial scenes where Oppenheim is in the small room mm. and he's getting grilled. Um, the transcripts of that are almost word for word mm. what was said. But everyone said it, well, like, you know, if Emily Blunt's section could just mm. easily be so cheap but because she's Emily Blunt, mm. and then she says it how she says it, mm. it's great. Like, I think, I, I personally think 
Downey Jr.'s got a very, very good shot at getting supporting actor at the right. Oscars. Um, and it would be very easy for him to just be this kind of going mad, sort of irritable psychopath. But actually, he's this sort of keeping this kind of professional facade and still like he's he gets angry but he gets conservative angry like he gets like he gets um sort of like like pent in angry mm. and doesn't or doesn't ever really let it fly out and when he does when it just starts to seep out that's when he shut off mm. and i just kind of like the fact that there was because the amount of um this is just me being a fanboy but the amount of prep and scale that goes into nolan films is so huge that i love the fact that he left it uh sort of hinge like hinging on the acting being good is where i think tenet falls apart a little bit is that it, it looks brilliant and the idea is genius and the score is great and mm. so much of tenet is wonderful but there's not enough room for the acting to be great right. so like i'm not sold on the relationship between uh robert pattinson and john david washington mm-hmm. if i've been sold in their friendship i would have invested in it so so much more right. i still love it because of all the new crazy things it does but the actual characters themselves are generally the weakest part of that film mm. whereas with oppenheimer when you rely on the acting as much as he did i think that's a risky thing to do because mm. you might well not always get the casting right mm. um and it also means that it was the perfect stage for those actors to act and yep. do it in the right way. Sure. And I think they did. And that's kind of why I love it as much as I do. Mm. Cause there's all these things going on with it. There's explosions and VFX and production design mm. and, and, and first person script and, and mm-hmm. IMAX cameras, but the acting is such a huge, huge part of it. I think Oppenheimer, it, it just, it, it, it just misses out on a ca- category that I absolutely hate. Mm, okay. Which is men, men. brooding. <laughs> Wait, well, which is men, yeah. <laughs> fair, fair comment. Uh, <laughs> which is men brooding about things. Uh-huh. Okay. So Oppenheimer, I, I feel like it, it's just shy of that. Right. There is a lot, there's a lot of screen time dedicated to men, men yeah. to men brooding yeah, about yeah, things. Yeah. And whether that be RDJ brooding about things mm. or Killian Murphy brooding about things mm. or Einstein, Einstein, brooding, Einstein about brooding about things, you're like, oh, there is a lot of male brooding here. Yeah. But, okay, so to give it, to give it its count, uh, a counterpart, mm. a counterpart, counterpoint, mm. thank you. Um, don't tell me. <laughs> don't walk <laughs> Um the Batman yeah the Robert, Robert Pattinson, Pattinson one, one which I adore oh it's just three hours of men brooding Zoe Kravitz oh yes and she brooded <laughs> and she... <laughs> no I, I thought... was not expecting the Batman to be your I case thought, though I thought she, she I thought she was great but like there were oh my ass hurt my ass physically <laughs> hurt in that cinema because it was so long and there were so many moments where I was like it's gonna end and then it just it, didn't. It, it does and then he endings. brooded for a little long. So like she like drove off on a motorbike into the sunset. And, and I was like, brooded. oh wow, one ending. And then he like stood there and brooded. And I was like, we're, we're gonna end now. We're gonna end now. And he just kept brooding. The first ending's then, on the helipads. When he yeah, broods after yeah. she's and then, he, and then he keeps fucking brooding. <laughs> and then at the end, he's like carrying, he's brooding through the water and he carries a light and he walks and there's this arrow of people behind mm-hmm. him as he carries him to safety and then he broods and you're like, ah, oh, this is going to be the end of the movie. And then he just keeps brooding and you're like, oh my God, <laughs> just smile, man. <laughs> Jesus it's Christ. emo Batman. He's not yeah, going to smile. Such a, uh, he's not Playboy Batman yet. That's yeah, the difference. Yeah, no, that's true. But, but this is what I mean in that I think there are some things that, like, in the nicest way, there are some men up and down the country who look at a man brooding in a film and then, like, they put, and then, and then the film, yeah, and in the film, yeah, they punch yeah, someone yeah. and then they brood about it. And men are like, oh, oh well, wow. I'm slightly worried now that that's what happens in Hell or High Water. Well, I just think, like, there are so many occasions where I've, I've, people are like, have you seen, like, in brood? I'm like, yes, it's men brooding, and then they punch each other. Yeah, well, that's, <laughs> that's the typical red flag one, is the, like... is the in brood or wolf of Wall Street. Yeah, yeah. And, and I just think, like, there are so many occasions where I'm like, was it a good performance, or mm. did men brood and hit each other? But do you know what? I watched the brood again the other week. I quite like it. No, you don't! <laughs> like, it is good, though. It, it's just one of those... It's I, just funny. It just falls into a category that I feel is oversubscribed. Well, yeah, I mean, that's society, yeah. I, I just think that, like, it, there are so many films that do that well, and that's another issue that I have with Michael Caine. 
Be just he's rude. A... <laughs> he's a man that stares into a particular person's eye, doesn't blink, and broods. And this is the same thing that I have <laughs> about so many films. <laughs> and I, I understand. Oh my god, there's so much emotional turmoil in this. And I was mm. like, okay, but, but the 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 audience that this is aimed for are looking at that and being like, oh, wow, man, brooding. I can't wait until he hits someone and then he hits someone. There's a certain subsection of the audience that will definitely be doing yeah. that. Yeah. But yeah. I, I, I think, I mean, it very much depends on the film for me. A lot of the time I can separate myself mm. from from that de- definitely very present element mm-hmm. of going, we'll, we'll have some men brooding. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that'll, that'll look great. Yeah, yeah. Um, but there are, there are times... When I, I I can see that happening, but I I don't want it to to detract from what I am actually feeling, which is right. that I'm getting on with this quite well. Mm. Like Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy right. has a lot of Gary Oldman and Toby Jones and John mm. Hurt brooding, mm. but it's so well layered that I'm just kind of definitely going with it. Sure, I totally take your point. Yeah. I <laughs> see it in so many films. Yeah, <laughs> um, I yeah I I think maybe that's. Maybe that's where I'm sort of at a, at a bit of a dichotomy here because, like I said, like the measured performance is something that I really thank you. Mm-hmm. Um, measured performance is something that I really value, mm. and a lot of the time that involves some brooding. <laughs> and I'm wondering now if I'm actually you're just a man I'm who like likes watching people brood. Yeah, is this brood? <laughs> Am I broody? Is this brood? Yeah, um, that's my that's my um, interesting. That's my pet peeve. Yeah. about things okay well I was, I was I'm also going to touch on this conversation in a different podcast as okay. well but I want to ask you yeah. then um do you want to ask it or on, do you want to start I want to I, I want to <laughs> <laughs> I I I ask you something so thank you for listening and uh, <laughs> uh, no, ask it then I, it's, I, I'm trying to work out how to word it okay but I think so on the topic of sort of women in film right do films that are primarily populated by men yeah. sort of immediately put you off it or, depends or, or, or on the it... subject matter. Okay. Sometimes yes, mm-hmm. sometimes no. Right. Like, okay, when the whole thing of Barbenheimer came out, mm. when I was thinking about what I want to watch, I was Barbie. V- <laughs> I was very so. I was very busy. I was like on tour at the time, yep. and you're doing eight shows a week, and you're like, okay, well, what am I going to dedicate my yeah, one yes. day yeah, off yeah, yeah, to? Yeah, yeah. Um, and so I was like, oh, if I only get to watch one of these, You'll go for the one that you which really one am I going to watch? And I'm going to watch Barbie yeah. because the subject matter is probably... Like, I wasn't somebody who liked Barbies. I didn't play mm-hmm. with Barbies mm-hmm. when I was a kid. It wasn't really my realm. But from what I'd seen about it, the kind of... The fun it made of that world mm-hmm. and then the positives it created from that world, mm-hmm. I wanted to watch it more. Mm-hmm. Not because I didn't think Oppenheimer would be brilliant. I thought Oppenheimer would be brilliant. Mm. But I saw a man brooding on the front cover. <laughs> <laughs> not another one! <laughs> I was like, no, not again! <laughs> and there are some films where they'll have been recommended to me and they'll be like, you have to watch this film. And I'll be like, oh, okay, interesting. And I will see like the poster or I will see the cast and if the cast is like man with man alongside man starring man and man i'm like oh okay. i love man <laughs> directed by michael Di- man no direct- god <laughs> directed by men i'm like oh okay <laughs> written by men I'm like, oh, okay right brilliant okay um, speaking of which adam driver in ferrari directed by michael man is coming out on boxing well, <laughs> that, that's exactly what i mean <laughs> that is and also Oh my god, if it's like Jason Bourne in, I'm like, right, I won't be going to see that movie. <laughs> Jason Bourne in. Probably Jason if Bourne, it, I would have expected for Jason Bourne if it's to be in. Jason it. Bourne versus this random. Is it this Jason Bourne versus this massive shark? I'm like, right, well, I'm not going to go and see that movie. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Do you mean Jason Statham? Yes, I do! <laughs> because I was thinking, Jason Bourne's only in the Jason Bourne films. No, I mean Jason Statham. Matt D- but also Jason Bourne. Frankly. Jason Bourne is Matt Damon. Oh, if what's going on? <laughs> It's like, here on the poster, a man on a motorbike. I'm like, right. Okay, yeah, but well. I, I think that's collective. No one really wants to watch Jason Statham films, do they? Jim. There's a film coming out, I think it's called The Beekeeper. Yes, in which he plays it looks remain. like the shit. God, doesn't it just look God, ass? I just I looked at that. And they were like, honey's flammable. I was like, that is the whole reason that you've made this movie. And that is the shittiest line. Well, you know, it's written into his contract that he's not allowed to lose fights in films. 
He can't be beaten in a fight. See, nothing says I have a tiny dick more <laughs> than having written into your rider, I'm not allowed but to But this is what I don't get, hell. is that in Spy, he just brilliantly takes the piss out but of himself. That's, that's so how I mean, is he self-aware enough to do that and then keep doing this? But Spy is a film starring what is essentially two women, two women and a man, yeah. okay, which is created by this world of... Like, so Paul Feig, who has notoriously worked with fantastic female comedians Mm -hmm. over time, Mm -hmm. it's got the cast of Bridesmaids, Mm -hmm. who are geniuses in their own right. Mm. I'm not saying saying that I like films with women more than I like films with men, because I don't think that that's true. But I like their... If it's solely men, Mm. I'm far likely to go and watch a film with solely Solely women women. instead. Like, Women Talking Mm. is... It gave me very similar vibes to something like... Oh god, I can't think of it. it's like I, th- I can't think of its m- mirror image at the moment. But I think there are a number of m- movies where there a vast majority of it is you know men discussing <laughs> around a table. Sorry, can we just imagine a film called <laughs> Men Talking? <laughs> if if a, a film called Men Talking came out, I think I should. I know, I know, I know that's exactly the point of the title. That is women the point talking, of women talking. Is it like yeah, women yeah. talking? Women How talking? dare no. they? But Get back be, in the I, re- I but... generally think Men Talking would be a very funny film. <laughs> I always want to make it. But... <laughs> Um, I, I just think... Okay, would you rather? Right, okay. <laughs> Risk case scenario, you're going to fuck the ass. Yeah. <laughs> no, because also, men talking is just every podcast with men ever. It's, it's like, look, I'm not saying they should stay in the kitchen, but what was the kitchen created there is, for? There is a meme going around at the minute, and it's literally a three-second clip, and there's no other context to it. Mm-hmm. It's just Andrew Tate going, how are women allowed to drive? And that's the <laughs> end of it. Exactly what I mean. <laughs> That's exactly it. That's exactly it. Um, yeah, I just, I've... It's not that it would put me off going to see. It. Sorry, it's such a long answer. I'm so <laughs> I'm so sorry to everyone. It's not that just having men in it would put me off going to see it, but I would have to have a reason yeah. other than the people in it yeah. to go and see yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Quite a, quite often, I go and see a film because I'm like, oh, I love this actor, mm. or I like this director. I love what they do, yeah. or oh, there's been some hype around this person. Mm. Or if it was a lineup, of, like if it was a lineup of men. Mm. I'm less inclined to just go and see it for the movie, yeah. which is savage, but mm-hmm. it's true. Okay, here's, here's, the, here's the follow-up question, and yep. this may be what we close on. Okay. Perhaps this is sexist of me, and if it is, it shall be cut from the episode. But women should stay in the kitchen. I agree, <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> How are women allowed to drive? Um, I think a lot of the films that have been all-female casts, right. and not all of them, mm. because some of them just are, and then they just do it, and then they're great. But a lot of the time, it's been a about the fact that, that they're, they're women. women. Yeah. And a lot of the time, because I, because I, you know, I, I like to think that, um, hopefully I'm, you know, mm. sort of, you know, like our mum. You can was, say I'm woke. Yeah, I'm woke. Yeah, I'm woke. Cool. But like, so, so the, the, the point I'm trying to get at here is that sometimes I can, if I'm switching on a film with an all female cast mm. and then so there starts to be a big point made about like, we're women. We were all women. Mm. I start to go, oh, that's not where I thought this was. I thought this was about the, the thing that they were doing. Okay. I see which what obviously, you mean. Which, <clears> now, Obviously, that comes from a point of me being in a, a privileged position. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because there are... As a white man. S- exactly. So I, I've won the lottery, by the yeah, way. Yeah, I'm yeah, a straight, yeah. white, white middle-class man. Yeah. That's a royal flush. Yeah. Um, With, who can grow a beard? Who can grow a beard? That's <laughs> winning. All, all that men want. <laughs> but, like... Obviously, there's people around. There's so many people around the world that still need to hear this and still need to recognise it mm. and say, you know, this is an all-female cast. Mm. Um and, and things are done differently by women, funnily mm. enough. Women don't start wars. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. You know, I know so, what you so, mean. so I'm wondering sh- some of the best examples, then, presumably, would be the ones where it's kind of just the women doing it. Yeah. I, I do feel this about, I mean, I do this, I feel this because I feel a particular way about, like, like a lot of different, not minorities, but people who aren't given the, the lottery. Mm hmm. So I feel that quite often in film, historically, we've, if there are films about women doing things, yeah. it's like, wow, they're women. Yeah. It's the same as if you have um, somebody who falls into the LGBT category. Mm-hmm. It's like, yep, you can do this and be gay. Like mm-hmm. it's it's mm-hmm. a whole thing. Um, and I was having a conversation with um, my um, castmate of a show I've just done. And he was, um, so he's a person of colour, and he was saying that, oh, you know, it really annoys me sometimes when I see in films, like, oh, this cool thing has happened, and he's black. Like, it's, mm. it's, it's not, it shouldn't be like, oh, wow, it's amazing that you can do this and be this thing. Yeah, yeah. 
which I agree. But how, I do think that in order to get to the point now where we're like, we shouldn't have to state that. Yeah. We've had to state had it. Had to state it, of course. Yeah. Um, and I don't like that we've had to state it because it's meant... Because you don't... Like, no one's ever going to watch a movie and be like, wow, he could ride a motorbike and he's a man! And he's a man! Like, yeah. <laughs> no one's ever going to think that. But you weirdly, you kind of have to say that if it's a woman. Mm. You have to be like, oh yeah, Catwoman and she can ride a motorcycle mm. because she's a woman. How woke are we? And you're like, right, okay. <laughs> um... There are some, so for example, like, uh, let's take the Oceans films. Yeah. So you've got Oceans 8, which yeah. is the, the female, the female one, one. And you've got the, all the others. Yeah. Um, I haven't watched all the others. Right. Because I don't care for them. However, yeah. I love Rihanna. So yeah. I have watched Oceans yeah, 8. Yeah, you've done this the wrong way. Right? I was like, in, in that movie, mm. I don't think it's actually ever said, oh, and we're women doing this. Now, I'm not saying it's a great movie. Mm. Okay, I'm, it has flaws, but I quite liked that nobody was like, oh, are we going to be able to do this if we're women, guys? Do mm. we have the mental capacity? We were like, they were like, no. I don't like the fact that it's about the Met Gala. Well, I do think that's there's, slightly there's based. The film is is pointing in so many directions that it's women doing it this yes. time around. But uh, n- we're not stealing. We're stealing a necklace. We're stealing a necklace. We're not stealing money. You know, I, I don't, don't get me wrong. I don't think it's. I don't think it's perfect. Mm. Um, I don't think it's necessarily good. Yeah, yeah. But I do think that, like, not not one of the women mm. said, are we going to be able to do this because we're women? Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. not one of the men there was like, are you going to be able to do this because yeah, you're a woman? Yeah, yeah. Um, and I also think films that pass the Bechdel test for me... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like Lord of the Rings. I love that. Bit. It's so funny. Dramatically. Every every uh, interaction between two female characters. It's a daughter going, <laughs> "Mummy," and that's Be quiet. It. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, I. You have something like Little Women, and I know that it's obviously mm. it's mm. oldie timey, and oh my god, how can they do anything? The men, the men are off fighting the war, and blah blah blah. Mm. But. Um, okay, no, Suffragette. I was going to say Hidden Figures. Okay. Oh, yeah, Hidden Figures. But even then, it's even about then, the fact that they're a woman. Yeah, sure. But Suffragette, it, it can be about women's issues, mm-hmm. but there's never a question in, oh, we're going to fight for this thing of like, can we do it because we're not men? Mm. It's just a given. We can do it because we're not men, mm-hmm. but we have to fight for this because we're not men. Mm-hmm. That's how I feel. Yeah. In a in a not-so-small nutshell. Yeah. In a rather large shell. In a shell. rather very bloody large. M- Crikey, how big is this thing? It's perhaps an eggshell at this point. <laughs> <laughs> an emu eggshell. Mm. Um, no, I was going to... Uh, I was going to... The, 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 the oceans thing... Wicked, wicked, wicked. Wicked, wicked. <laughs> <gasps> the oceans thing is not the... It's, it's, it, oh, one, I don't want to hear your rant about oceans. Though. No, no, no. Just number one, it's, it's, it's the remake thing. Oh, yeah. Of going... Well, oh, we'll, we'll do it with women, like Ghostbusters. Success. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Ocean's Eight and Ghostbusters are two also, fundamentally flawed. Maybe I do hate men. I've seen the new Ghostbusters maybe and not the old one. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the, but the point is that the thing that I didn't like about Ocean's Eight is mm. that it was missing Steven Soderbergh. That was what was wrong right. with it. Was because it was made worse. Right. It wasn't made. It was the first, Ocean's Eleven, Ocean's Twelve and Thirteen. Yeah, no, you I shit, shit, yeah, yeah. But uh, Eleven yeah. is genuinely very good, mm. and it's because it's being directed by Soderbergh who can do this stuff in his sleep. Yeah. I the also, new one just was uh, not. I don't like remakes of things. Any, like, I don't think yeah. there should be more than three films called Fast and Furious. I think surely you've been fast and you've been furious. I'm very excited for women talking Tokyo Drift. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, like, surely we can stop there. Like, I, and I'm not saying... Yeah, but, you know, but you know why there's so many? Why? Family. That's what it's about. Family. Spell F A M B L W E. I do, Family. just I don't think that like you need to make this thing number five, six, or seven. Like the Shrek films. Can I tell you exactly what's going on here with a quote? Um, Why what, what inspired you to build a second Krusty Krab right, right next, next to, to the, the original? original? Yes. yes. Money. <laughs> exactly that. I just don't think it's needed. And I think everybody's like, you know when they made um the the fucking Hobbit into four films? Unnecessary probably yeah and and I don't like when they're like oh well this number one of this went well let's make number two Mean Girls 1 is one of the best movies ever created ever <laughs> I not not because it's a good movie but because it's iconic mm-hmm. okay because it creates in itself the meme of memes mm. and because it is the perfect in my opinion the perfect like teen like chick flick yeah. that has ever that has ever been created right 
there's a reason that we don't talk about Mean Girls 2. <laughs> <laughs> and it's because Mean Girls 1 was good. Mm, mm-hmm. <laughs> okay? Yeah. It's the same with so many yeah. other I mean, things. There's a reason that a we lot. don't talk about Grease 2. There's a reason we don't talk about 18 again. Yes. Yeah, I just don't like the... I don't like pointless remakes. Yeah. When it's... I get d- doing it with women. Oh, yeah, no, it's a new twist because we've done it with women. But it almost feels like the subcategory. So secondary. Um, and so I'm like, well, why not just make a new film for women? Which is why I look at Ocean's 8 and then I look at Widows mm. and I go, well, I know which one of these I'd rather be watching. Yeah. Well, it's the same as um, when Disney are... Like, now doing this thing. So, for example, Rachel Zelga will be Snow White. Yeah. I think a lot of Disney needs a reboot. Disney has been a very... Well, yeah. cla- you know, it, 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 it needs to happen. Yeah. I think The Little Mermaid that just came out was beautiful. It was I mean, fantastic. Yeah, I mean, if you're complaining about the fact that it's... Uh, oh, you, 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 you need to go over yourself. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, I think it was fantastic. But I think the, the point of Snow White is that it's about somebody who looks a certain way. I don't think you do the other... So I think, make a new movie. Oh, I thought you were going to say set it in Nazi Germany. No, I think make a new... make Empower these people mm. anew. Like, give them something that is their own. Yeah. Like, don't... don't. Do you know what I mean? Don't, like... Don't just coattail. Yeah, go. don't, don't colour something it's, in. It's for black people now. Exactly. And it was for white people before. It's, don't, don't, don't belittle yeah. something. Like, an, like I think... If you want, if you want to create something that's empowering, create something that's empowering. Don't try and rework something that came before, case so in, that it fits your point. Case in point, Black Panther. Right. Because yeah, yeah, because, yeah, yeah. Yes, it was part of Marvel, but like. But it was a new it thing was entirely. His, it was a new thing. It was his own thing, uh-huh. and also, um, it was good. Mm. And that has so much. Everything yeah. has so much more weight to me when it's good. I mm-hmm. think. I, you know, the the thing, I wouldn't have been so annoyed about the Ocean's 8 being in the same ca- franchise as, as Ocean's 11 if it mm. weren't for the fact that it was made without the care that the others were made with. Sure. If it was, then that would be a far, far less important thing for me mm. because I would have been wrapped up in all the stuff that I loved about the other ones. Mm. So it wouldn't have mattered. Um, so I'm very much a believer that it's got to be good. Mm. You can't just be, it's there for their sake because that's injustice to what you're trying to do. I, you've yeah. got to make, you've got, well, you you've got to, make you've got to it, care about you have to it and make, make it, it good. Tr- you've got to try or you have least. to make it better. Yeah. You, yeah. You, it, 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 to just go, um, uh, well, actually I've made a film with a female protagonist and then she goes through the classic stage, you know, and she just, and she's just under every single uh-huh. bit of, um, you know, female oppression that every woman ever is. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And, and that's just part of the story and that's yeah. it. And you don't ever, you know, we don't think of her pushing against it or mm. anything like that. Um, well, it was it's like, all very well. You've got a woman there, but you're not. You're not trying, mm-hmm. and you're not. You're not trying to make it good or you're caring about it enough. I thought the new Bond. Did yeah, it perfectly. I, th- I, I absolutely adored No Time to Die for exactly I that reason. I think they did it perfectly in that, like, they were like, oh, it's not that we're just saying that a man can do this. Because mm. look, Lasana Lynch is now 007, technically. Well, exactly. But it's not that, it's not that, like, she's taken over the role of James Bond. Yeah. We're just saying, this isn't something that's exclusive yeah. here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we've created this entire new system mm. where, like, this person, who's just as good as you, by mm-hmm. the way, and has done all the things that you have claimed to be able to yeah. do apart from womanized yes, your probably. entire life um look look, look this who's here's this person who like happens to be a woman who mm. happens to be a woman of color who mm. has come in and done everything that you th- you've said that you are the only one that can do it oh no who's yeah, gone no, t- come another, in and done everything that you can do, you can do you're it. still here yeah, yeah, yeah we haven't written over you mm. she's just got your job because we thought you were dead yeah and uh, but that yeah, exemplified by the anna the armor scene where she just goes, yeah, I think I know how to do it. And then it's yes, just better yeah, yeah, than yeah. everyone. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. And it's great. And she's having so much fun. I've done two weeks of training or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it's just better. And it's, it's mm-hmm. really a lot of fun to mm-hmm. watch. Yeah. Um, we went slightly off the rails. What was the question? Um, it was about women in film. Oh. But um, I'm very aware that we need to um, yeah, we need wrap to this up. up yeah. Because quite quite brilliantly on the topic of women in film, Verity's got to go and bake in the kitchen. I've got to, I've got to go back to the kitchen. <laughs> uh-huh. Is that in film? How I'll film myself in the kitchen. are you allowed to drive? Um, <laughs> so we'll, we'll leave it there. But um, we've covered a lot more than I thought we were going to cover. You're welcome. Um, and I very much enjoyed this being a bit less 
My sister will be in something soon. Just finished a run of a thing. Verity's, literally the other day. Verity's finished finished a run of something yesterday, so she's um, here now. So look out for it. Stop now. No, do because people will go. We'll get my one Brazilian listener to fly <laughs> Your over. one Brazilian listener go will fly one over. One person going, I live for real. You are a Brazilian listener. I really hope you're well. I hope you're well, Brazilian listener. And I'm you, really fascinated by your language. You gave me uh, a, a, a very, very exciting evening looking at my Spotify mm-hmm. statistics when mm-hmm. I went, oh, I'm international. So thanks for that. Hmm. Cross continental as well, not just international. Cross continental. Okay, let's end it there. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> thanks for listening. Uh, recommendation this week. I'm gonna say Parasite is on Netflix now. So if you have Netflix and you haven't seen Parasite, then you absolutely should do that. If not, mm. there is a film called Embrace of the Serpent, which is about the even when it seems perfectly well natured, the devastating impacts of uh, colonial encroachment in Amazonian tribes people. Do I get a recommendation? If you would like. There's, uh, I-, I recommend everybody watch Suffragette. Okay. That's my recommendation. There you go. Two recommendations. Um, happy Christmas. We didn't talk about Christmas. We should have talked about Christmas. Well, I talked about my favourite Christmas films last year. Oh, never mind then. So I wouldn't really have much more to add other than I like Christmas films. They're, yeah. They're happy. Okay. Um, so there's that. So Merry Christmas and I will see you hopefully very soon with two guests at once, which will be a first. Oh my God. Um, two guests, one two podcast. Two guests, one podcast. <laughs> ah, I'm leaving. Bye. <laughs>